So I'm Dave House from House Family. And we're one of the uh, new entries in the valley. Uh, here's where, actually where we are. Um, it's on both sides, but our vineyards are shown there in the center. Right above us is uh, Mount Eden. Right down here to the bottom left is Catherine Kennedy. And just off the photo on the right is Ridge. So we can stand in our vineyards and we can see uh, the Ridge Vineyard. So uh, we're uh, right in uh, an area that grows some really uh, great wines and great caps. And uh, you can see the, the, uh, the main blocks of the vineyard. I'll uh, mention that a little further. The uh, reds are the Cabernet Sauvignons. I might say how we planted this vineyard. Uh, I'm an engineer. I spent 23 years at Intel. I was on the, I was the top executive on the executive staff for 13 years. I ran the microprocessor business. And so I'm going to take a scientific approach. So I went out and I hired the best dirt doctor I could find, Dr. Albert Cass. He does 70 soil pits, five foot deep, took samples at three levels, tested for 100 different things, and selected the rootstock based on soils. We then put at the same time a bunch of weather stations and we collected several weather parameters 365 days in the year. Took that database, computer correlated with other regions, working with Dr. Daniel Roberts, my viticulturist, and with Dr. Cass. We uh, found the areas where we had the closest microclimate match. We went to those areas and we said, what's best there? And that's what we wound up planning. And uh, so the Cabernet is our primary product and our flagship product. You can see the red blocks there. Uh, there's a little bit of yellow. I love Chardonnay and I want to do a Chardonnay. I said, where on the property can Vermont Vineyard and Chardonnay work? And the answer is down at the bottom of the valleys where the cold air uh, collects and it warms up during the day. More of the Sonoma Canaris uh, kind of uh, environment. And so those are the places where we want to put in some Chardonnay. But we wanted to make a true Bordeaux blend, and so there's a block. Uh, number eight is Cabernet Franc, and block number seven is Petit Bordeaux. So uh, we were established for family operation. I show this uh, chart because I happen to live right here in the middle of the vineyard, but I've got two more houses that I've built for my grandchildren, and I let their parents live with them. <laughs> So, so we have a compound, uh, and we all work at the winery and in the vineyards. And uh, my daughter's husband, who lives in the first house, uh, is a manager of operations and is the main driver of the business. But my kids and my uh, in-laws and, and uh, work in the winery and in the vineyards, and my uh, grandchildren aren't quite old enough to pour, but they can check you in and they can check you out and sell you wine. So they work in the tasting room as, as well. So it's a real family operation. They're over 12. They're, they're over 12. Absolutely. <laughs> 18, 17, 16, and 15 are the uh, four that uh, work there. I've got a, uh, a two year old and a six year old. They don't. Uh, <laughs> so so uh, it's a complete family operation. We started planting uh, vines in 1998. Why did I do this? At Intel, I was the guy on the executive staff that came out of the computer industry. I was the only one on the executive staff that wasn't a physicist or a chemist. And so when the customers came into town, the sales guys wanted me to go out to dinner with the customer. I could relate to them. And for the first five years, they handed me the wine list and I handed the sales guy and he'd pick out a wine. After a while, I said, I know it's not working out. Give me that wine list. I've had all of those. I know what I want. And I really learned about wine and appreciation for fine wines on my expense account. <laughs> <laughs> There's uh, my son in law, Jim Cargo, and I in the vineyard. Uh, we are very much a mountain vineyard. This doesn't show the slopes. Anybody who goes down Pierce Road, right as you get to the first corner, if you look up, you'll see our vineyard. And it is extremely steep at that point. And all of it is, is southeast facing mountain vineyard between 450 feet and 850 feet elevation. We in, are in the Saratoga Gap. And uh, one of the reasons that Ridge and uh, uh, Mount Eden and uh, uh, Captain Kennedy, Marty Mathis, produce some great wines is we get the fog that comes in at night. We're southeasterly facing, so the vines get the chill from the fog at night, but because we're facing the sun, 
we get warmed up by the warm uh, morning sun. Generally, uh, warmed up the vineyard. But when the thing starts to get hot, like now outside, the sun is now moved over towards the west, and we are on the east facing slope. And so it's opaque on our vineyard, and we don't tend to bake the vines. And the, the thing here is it gives us a nice long ripening time. So we believe it's great grapes and great wines. Um, we got a crew of eight. We, I also am one of the four owners of the Mountain Winery. If you drive up there to see concerts, you drive through a vineyard, that's my vineyard. I planted that and my crew of uh, eight plus my vineyard manager farms that. I make the wines also for the Mountain Winery. But since I've got partners, the estate wine has got a different label. Um, and uh, I also uh, buy the non-estate wine there. 100% of our wine is the state wine. Our winemakers, Jeffrey Patterson and Mount Eden, we focus first on vines, growing the best grapes. We ferment on our property underneath Jeffrey's supervision, actually barrel age in his cellars, uh, but he's our winemaker. Here's a, a blending session where we've taken beakers of wine from the various barrels and we're uh, working on uh, the blend. I put together a panel of chefs and sommeliers and Jeffrey and, uh, and I sit down with a family and we decided to blend each year. Barrel aging, we're 50% uh, new uh, French oak. Uh, we use some one-year-old and neutral to not over oak our wine. As we uh, rack the wine, we'll move it into a barrel depending on where we feel the wine is. Here's our uh, view from our tasting room. It's a spectacular place overlooking Silicon Valley. We're open today and tomorrow, by the way. <laughs> You're welcome to come there. If you go down Pierce Road, you'll see signs that will take you right to our wine room. And we also do events up there. Here's a dinner in the video. So uh, we've got two wines here today. I brought a, a right bank wine and a left bank wine. Since we're doing Bordeaux's, and I'm bottling one of each. Now, the first wine is a Merlot. Uh, now, Merlot is a very thin-skinned grape, and it can ripen very quickly. And if it's in a valley floor, like a Napa, that can create a big jam of fruit. As Eric said, in the Santa Cruz Mountains, our wines tend to lean a little bit towards the French style. They're a little lower in alcohol, but not so jammy. And we work very hard. These are both 13.5% uh, alcohol wines, but we work to make not a French wine. French wines are more austere. There's more of the, the uh, earthy tones and stone uh, flavors to them. We're making a California wine that leans in that direction. This uh, Now, because Merlot can be quite fruity, even in the Santa Cruz Mountains, but it can be a little flat. It tends to not have as much length as some of the other reds. We blended Cabernet Sauvignon in here. So this is actually 75% Merlot, which is the minimum we can put in here and still label it a Merlot, and 25% Cabernet Sauvignon. What's that? This is a, a 2008. So uh, you'll uh, get maybe some currant in here, a little nose of uh, mint and eucalyptus, which is characteristic of the Santa Cruz Mountains. A little sweet chocolate. You might even pick up in the nose a little uh, uh, red licorice. A really great sipping wine. And. Uh, one that uh, we continue to sell out of. The second question here. You said you used oak barrels one year. We used, uh, we bought 50% of our oak barrels are one year, are new. We use them when they're one year old. So about half of it's one year, but we keep neutral barrels. Barrels that are more than two years old are considered neutral. And if we're feeling the oak is getting a little where we want it or getting a little high, we'll put it into a neutral barrel, but 50% new uh, French oak. So what's in this lab, the blend of many different age of oak barrels? There's two different, but actually what you're going to sense is two different years of oak barrels. The neutral is not going to do anything. It could be stainless, except we don't use stainless. So, um, uh, and yes, we believe in corks because our age, our wines are very uh, aged very well. Although our first vintage is only 2001, uh, it's still drinking very well. Question: uh, Do you grow the same grapes about Saratoga as you're about Now, what 
Uh, up at the Mountain Winery, we use the same methodology Dr. Alfred Cass and Dr. Daniel Roberts uh, to dig the soil pits. And that's a higher elevation, and it's very interesting. We spent, we dug 70 soil pits up there, we did all these tests, did all this computer correlation, the data, came back and said, ah, this is a, a board, this is a burgundy vineyard. And we planted uh, Pinot and Chardonnay up there. It's interesting that over 100 years ago, Paul Masson rode his horse up there, felt the soil, sniffed it, looked at the trees and said, I think this is a great place for Chardonnay and Pinot. Yeah. <laughs> He spent a lot less money and came to the same conclusion. So we're growing the same, the same grapes, grapes that he's growing. So the second wine, that, here's a question. Can you explain a little more of your uh, living sessions, what the atmosphere is like, what that's fine to say, what does it feel like for you in So uh, I, have a, uh, a couple, I have a sommelier on staff, and I have a master sommelier who is a friend who participates. My son-in-law owns a restaurant and is a chef. Uh, and uh, Jeff, we have Jeffrey up there and, and Sean is assistant winemaker, uh, together with the members of the family. You know, Fabiani and I uh, and a couple other members of the family will be there. And we start out by tasting every lot. Now we harvest block, we saw the blocks, every block separately. And our wine's 100% of state grown, all from our grapes. But we don't harvest a complete block at a time because we're mountain, we'll often do the top of the vineyard of the block separate than the bottom. We'll ferment it separately, we age it separately, we'll taste them. We all independently taste, we take notes, we say, what did you see in each block? We comment about the different blocks. Now, we're all on Cabernet Sauvignon, but it's amazing the differences you'll go block for block. We'll decide what will probably make the good, the best Cabernet part of the blend. Then we'll go to the Merlots. We've got two or three different blocks of Merlot. We only have one block of Cap Franc and one block of Petit Pinot. And so we'll then start playing, uh, you know, with a graduated column that goes one to 100, and we'll say, let's do 34% uh, of this block and 22% of that block, and we'll experiment first with the cap blending. We'll get satisfied with the pure cap, and then we'll start playing with the blends of the uh, the other three grapes. So um, what you'll find in the next grape, uh, the next uh, glass, this is our flagship wine. This is our Cabernet Sauvignon. It's got 75% Cabernet Sauvignon from three different blocks, 13% Merlot, 9% Cap Franc, and 3% uh, Petit Pinot. What we're going for here is a really balanced wine. This is a, a left bank wine. This is more of a Medoc uh, uh, region uh, type of wine. And what we're going for is, I don't like those big jammy Napa Four wines that kind of come in and take over your mouth and then are high alcohol and leave you feel like your tongue is cauterized. We make a wine, we make a wine that is meant to go well with food, but it's great for a sipping wine. We go for balance. So when this comes in your mouth, it shouldn't overtake your mouth. It should be a nice pleasant sensation that kind of develops around the edge of your tongue, but finishes with a really great finish in the back of your throat. And that's the 2007 Cabernet Sauvignon. Question over here. The question was about the year 2007. 2007 wines in Napa Valley in particular were, were very highly rated and throughout our region 2007 was a wonderful year for growing grapes. It was a great year for the red grapes in particular, a great uh, year for this particular wine. Uh, it's very interesting, our 2008, which we're pouring out uh, in, in one of the tasting areas, uh, uh, still a little bit younger, a little more fruit forward kind of wine. Uh, this 2007 is so well grounded, it's balance, balance, balance. It's just a really nice little like beverage I like this one. So I think you're short because I'm your part of our I love to think of people.